How can companies get the most innovation out of their employees? Joining us for this week's Smith Business Close-Up is Rashri Agarwal, the Rudolph Lamone Chair and Professor in Entrepreneurship and the Academic Director of the Dingman Center for Entrepreneurship at the University of Maryland's Robert H. Smith School of Business. Professor, thank you for being here. Thank you. So what can companies do to take their workforce and get the most innovation possible out of this group? Well, in the first case, of course, treat them right. Pay them well. But often, money is not the reason why people stay at a company. And more importantly, more than staying, give their very best, which is their creative energy and their intellectual capacity. So you want to give them autonomy, and you want to give them mastery, and you want to provide them with a sense of purpose. Those are the four elements. So you, you want to pay them enough so that money's off the table, as Dan Pink would say. But then you want to focus on these three aspects that really enable innovation and creativity. Is it the sort of thing where 80% of the innovation and creativity comes from 20% of the people? Well, you could say that there's an 80-20% rule, but then the question that I would say back and I would challenge companies is then what are you doing with the other 80%? Why are they not being innovative? What about your culture is stifling their creativity? So for me, an innovative organization is the one that gets 100% out of 100% of their employees. So and a, it can be done. A manager, maybe an old school manager, might look at this situation and not want to have so much freedom for the employees that, that they leave. In fact, I would say if you love them, let them go. The reason is that most people can clock in and clock out for eight hours a day. But are they really giving you the best of their mental capacity? So it's not just the time that they put in. It's not even the physical labor. That's not what makes for an innovative organization. It is the thought that they're putting in. And people cannot think if you hold any kind of a gun to their head. One of the biggest things that you can do is give them a sense of autonomy. And indeed, if it is the case that they have better opportunities elsewhere, find ways in which you can match them. But if you can't, then let them go. In fact, boomerang employees or spin-ins happen to be the kind of employees. Boomerang employees is when your employee leaves, they go for other pastures, and then you hire them back. And in fact, when you hire them back, they're more productive, they're happier, and they're more engaged. You can also choose which of these employees you want to hire back versus not. So that's a very good way of screening. Now, what's for a spin-in? A spin-in is something that Cisco, for instance, did not once, not twice, but three times with the same set of employees. Basically, they gave them the venture capital to spin out and create their own organization. And they said, well, if you're successful, then we have an option to buy you back. They were. And in fact, spin, for, for Cisco, this works because the employee team is taking all of the risks. And if it's not successful, then they don't need to have spent even more of their money and energy in investing in this organization. But if it is successful, then they can bring these employees back. They can acquire the company into themselves, and they can profit from it. Um, Reuters, the media company, mm -hmm. used to be known for that sort of strategy yes. in, in the media space, that, that they would fund somebody's project, and mm -hmm. if it worked, they would buy it back. They would buy it back at, at, a, at a high cost. Yes. They would wind up spending a lot of money for something that if they developed it internally might have cost less. You would argue it, it might not have worked. Well, there are all of these projects tend to be the riskier projects. Most entrepreneurial projects end up requiring uh, employees to have the freedom to really do things that they would not be able to in a typical organizational aspect. So by allowing them to go free, you are enabling them to take their autonomy and really develop something successful. So in fact, you're reducing the risk that the project is less successful in the first place. But even if it is not successful, you're better off investing a little bit of venture capital. It's kind of getting a toehold, but not going whole hog in. So overall, across all of the potential projects, not just the successful and the unsuccessful ones, a company comes on ahead if they follow the strategy as opposed to uh, trying to invest in all of them in-house.
So short of having everybody leave to, to do this, what else can companies do, um, and we touched on this at the beginning, yeah. to, to keep people happy and engaged and innovating within the organization? Yes. So many companies have a 20% rule. What is the 20% rule? It's different from the 80-20% that you just talked about earlier. This is give the employee 15 to 20% of their time to develop projects, to develop products that they themselves are passionate about. Now you, and in fact, you'd be surprised as to how many of them would put in way more than 40 hours a week. In fact, work over the weekends because this is their baby, this is their project. And that allows the company then to really come up with these brand new innovations. So if you think about most of Google's new products, they are developed within the 20% rule. If you look at 3M, which also has the 15% uh, rule, their, most of their innovations comes from individuals because they have the knowledge. They have the ability to think outside the box if you give them the space. Sort of thing might work in the media and uh, television business. Who knows? Well, how might you apply the 20% rule, Jeff? <laughs> well, we're out of time here. Okay. Professor Rush <laughs> Nice, Viagra nice sidestep. <laughs> joining us from the University of Maryland's Robert H. Smith School of Business. Thank you for your time. Thank you.